What's going on, crew? Big C9210 here, back once again. First off, I'd just like to say, for some strange reason, my webcam's fucked up and I can't zoom in anymore, so welcome to my shithole of a bedroom. And if you're wondering why Pusheen's down there, it's the girlfriend, so don't even fucking ask about that shit. Right, okay, so we are back. This is video number two of four on my ultimate seven days to die networking guide. One thing to point out, actually, although this is a seven days to die networking guide, this will actually work for any version. Not any version, but any game. Any game you can think of, this guide will work for any game. All right, but I'm focusing on seven days to die, so today we're talking about seven days to die. All right, so don't forget, if you like this video, please press like, comment, subscribe, tell your mom. And so... Topics are, in the first video, if you didn't watch the first video, click this square and I will take you there. So in the first video, we learn all about IP addressing, how your internal IP addressing system works on most people's home networks, and how you can work out what your IP addresses are and the likes. So, if you haven't seen that video and you need to go and see it, click my face and then go and see it and then come back to this afterwards. This video is all about port forwarding, okay? Now, I'm going to do this video on the assumption that you know nothing about ports or port forwarding or anything else that I'm talking about. So, let us begin. To begin with, we need to answer the question of what the f is a port, okay? Now, imagine ports as holes that your computer's IP addresses talk through, usually via a firewall of some sort, okay? Bear with me, we're going to go back to the network diagram from the first video, but bear with me, okay? There are two types of ports. One of them is called TCP IP, which is quite... Uh, it's not new, but it's more modern. And then you have UDP, which is an older kind of port, but it's still used nowadays. Ports are numbered and are often used specifically for certain things. Example, TCP IP port 80 is used for browsing the web. TCP IP port 445 is used for sharing files over Windows PCs. A port range is a short way of saying that all ports between. So just as an example, a port range of, a port range of TCP IP 80 to 84 is like saying port 80, port 81, port 82, and 83, and 84. Exactly the same thing, but it's easier just to say TCP IP 80 to 84. So, let me just draw this as a diagram. So, you have your computer, and your computer has a firewall on it. Okay? As we were talking about before, TCP IP port 80 allows you to talk to the internet okay so what this means is it means your firewall actually has a hole in it called a port and this port is open because ports can be open or closed obviously if it was closed this would be bricked up but it's open to allow port 80 traffic so that your computer can go out and talk to the likes of facebook google twitter and youtube and all the rest of it okay so that's a fairly straight example Alright, so now we know that what a port is, what the fuck is port forwarding? Now, port forwarding is passing on data from a specific port, or a specific range of ports, to a different computer on the network. So that's like you saying, yeah, give me this traffic, I'm going to pass it on to someone else. Okay, Used to direct incoming traffic to its intended destination. Most commonly used for gaming. It's usually configured in the router, 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 I'm fucking English and from the north, so I call it a router, and you usually configure it via a web browser. In order to port forward on your router, you must first log into the router and make some rules. Okay, so we've got a couple of keywords here. We've got rules, we've got IPs, ranges, so let's move on. So you've got you. We've got your home server, you've got your internal network, uh, you've got your friends, you've got your internal IPs, and you've got your external IPs. 
Now, in the first video, we learned what our IP addresses are and how to find them. So in this example, we know that our IP address is 192.168.110. We know that our server that we've set up is 192.168.1.104. And we know that our router's IP, which is also known as a gateway, we know that its IP is 192.168.1.1 internally. Okay? And we've got our friends outside who want to get in and play on our server. We also know that our external IP, which we learned in the last tutorial, is 27.174.2.25. So the problem is at the minute is that our friends are trying to connect to our server, which is on the inside of the network. But when they get to the router, the router is blocked. The router is blocking them. The big firewall is up. So what we need to do is we need to set up some rules, okay? So, a rule is an instruction for the router to tell it which IP addresses to divert the port traffic to. A home routers, such as like a BT Home Hub or a Virgin Super Hub or any kind of router that you get from your IP, are configured slash set up via logging in into it via a web control panel that the router actually has hosted on it, okay? A lot of home routers are limited to 16 rules or 32 rules, but to be honest, we can set this up using only one rule, which we'll get to in a bit. Sometimes two, but in this case, one. A rule can be based on a single or range of ports and can be applied to both TCP IP and UDP at the same time within the same rule. Now, I'll show you an example of this later on. Don't freak out, okay? So again, I'm just going to reiterate this. Router port forward and rules are related to inbound traffic only. So on the diagram that we just looked at before, we are setting up a rule so when our friends talk to us on the internet, it goes to the server. Alright, what we got next? Uh, so, once again, we've got our traffic, and we know that this is what we want to do. So, we know that our friends have got some TCP and UDP traffic because Seven Days to Die uses both TCP and UDP. And we know it wants to hit the router and we want it to hit the server. Obviously, at the minute, we can't really do this because the wall's blocked up. So what we want to do is we want to unblock here and we want to unblock here and we want to forward it over here. So, where am I, where am I? All right, one second. One second. Uh, uh, uh. Right, give me one second, people. Right, so... Ah, right, okay, 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 okay. So the question is, what port numbers... Ignore that bit that just happened. The question is now is, what port numbers do we need to open in order to get this traffic through here? Now, I'm not going to say it out loud, and this is not to be a dick. Let me elaborate. First off, see the description of this video. The description of this video will have the correct ports for the most recent version of Seven Days to Die in there, so you know. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, again, it'll be in the video description. If you're watching this on Steam, because I do make this as a Steam guide, it will be in the Steam description. Now, the reason why I'm putting it into the description and not in this video is because in Alpha 1 to 8, all you had to do was unblock these ports. 25, uh, 25,000. In Alpha 9, it changed to 26,900. In Alpha 11, it's TCP 26,900 and UDP 26,901 or 26,902. So the reason why I'm not putting it in this video and why I'm putting it in the description is so you guys can watch this video and then just nip into the description and then you'll know exactly what port range. Because you might be watching this when Alpha 100 has been released. You might be watching this when 7 Days of Dies in beta. Or you might even be watching this when 7 Days is fully released. And by then, they might have changed the ports. So, for the rest of this video, I'm going to be doing it for Alpha 11. However, I must stress, look in the comments of this video to find out what the most recent ports are. Alright. Sorry, I, just, I was a bit anal about that, but fucking, I had to do it. So, let's break this down. We've got our little home network here. So we've got 
us and we know that the server IP is 192.168.1.104 so in order for us to set up port forwarding we need to open up a web browser on our computer and we go to the address bar and we type in the address for the router okay now once we've done that we will get a login page because like I was saying in previously in the tutorial routers actually have their own little website which you can log into and then that allows you to control the router so once you've logged in you will have you'll not necessarily obviously my router is a TP link router um, yours if it's a D link router or if it's a version super hub or if it's a whatever if you don't see a lot of options like this, there will be an advanced settings button somewhere on there. I know on Virgin Super Hubs and BT Home Hubs, they only give you a few options to begin with, but there will be an advanced settings button. Now, when you press the advanced settings button, you will want to be looking for something like forwarding. Okay? So, have a little look around. It might take you five minutes. But when you find it, I'm sure you'll find, be able to find it in the port forward and section. You will have a page which looks something like this. And basically, what it's explaining is it's explaining all of the different rules, because this is where you set the rules up. It will show you a list of rules that are currently configured on your router. Now, if this is the first time that you've ever been on your router, there could quite well be no rules set up. So. Obviously, you want to press Add New, and you want to set up a rule. I want to reiterate this one more time. In this example, I'm using Alpha 11 as an example, but bearing in mind, you need to check the comment of this video out, the description, that is, to find out what the latest ports are. But for the rest of this example, I'm going to be using Alpha 11, which is TCP IP 26900 and UDP 26901 to 26902. So... What we're going to do now is we're going to press add new, which will take us to the new rule screen. So what we're going to do here is, as you can see, I've filled this out to say 26900, and then I've put a little dash, a hyphen, in there, and then I've put 26902. So what we're saying is unblock this port range, which is 26900. 26901 and 26902. So what that's doing is that this rule here is opening three ports. Okay? We're leaving internal port blank because like this is if you wanted to map one port to a different port. So if you wanted to change port numbers, but we don't want to change port numbers, we just want to open these three ports. Next up, we need to say where we want to divert the traffic to. Now we know from our diagram and from the first tutorial, we know that our server's IP is 192.168.1.104. So we put that in there. So we're now saying when the traffic hits the router on this port range, divert it to this machine. Now protocol is what type of ports do you want to do this on? Now, if I press this combo box, it would say, do you want to do it on TCP? In which case, 26900. But then I would have to make another rule for this port range to do it on UDP. So, just by selecting all, it does it on both. So what that means is, we've just opened 26900, 26901, 26902 on both TCP and UDP. So we've used one rule to open up six ports. Okay, and that's pretty much it to be honest. So, by doing this, our internal setup that one rule that we've just applied now means that when the traffic comes in, it hits the rule and the rule passes the traffic on to the server. And now you should be able to host your server and your friends should be able to connect. That is how you set a port forwarding. Now, in that tutorial, we just set up 
26902. If you were doing something like using Alex Fixes, or if you wanted to be able to access your web console from outside in the internet, or if you are connecting to, say, gameservers.com or whatever, they will need to have these rules enforced on, say, just as an example, 7 Days to Die, its default port for Telnet's 8080. So you would set up a TCP IP rule for 8080. Or if it was the web console, the web console's default port is 8081. So you would set up the port forward and rule for 8081 so that you can control using the server manager tool to connect to your uh, server from outside. One other thing, if you're using Alex Fixes and you have the web server, i.e. the real-time map, again, see some of my other tutorials if you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you want the real-time map um, of your server accessible to your friends, you'll need to set up a rule for whatever port it's on, which I believe is the web server port plus two. So if your web server's on 8081, you would need to open up 8083 so that when your friends go to it in the web browser, it takes them to the server and then that's where your map will be. Again, I've wrote other tutorials on the web server map. Um, so if you're unsure on that, go see them. But this is where you would add the rules in order for your friends in the outside world to access it. So one other thing before I forget is that there is a possibility that your server might have Windows Firewall on it. And there is a small chance that Windows Firewall might block this traffic. So, if that is the case, you've got two choices. You can either turn off Windows Firewall, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can go into the control panel for Windows Firewall and you can open the ports on this computer in order to let the traffic through. Now, I'm pretty sure that seven days to die when you first install and run the dedicated server, it asks you or it automatically opens those ports. But if you're still experiencing connectivity, that's what it'll be. Um, so, yeah, one other, rule, uh, one other thing to mention is that when you port forward on a router, it automatically opens the ports. So by us creating those rules, not only did it create the rules, but it also opened the ports to let the traffic through and then forwards the traffic. Okay, that's just about it. So, well done. You now know how to set up a server. You know how to get your IP ranges. You know how to forward your ports. You should now be able to go and make not just a 7 days a die server, but any game server using these principles. If you like this video, tell your friends, tell your mom bookmark this please like it please leave a comment please subscribe next up i want to be showing you all about static ip addresses it's totally optional but i do advise watching it or watching for it coming out um static ip addressing if you're serious about hosting a server or if you're going to be hosting a server for a long period of time static ip addressing is very important and obviously you want to be watching it anyway I'm Big C9021 from TeamSEO.com, the No Blueprints blog. Please let us like, comment, subscribe, tell your mom, and I shall see you guys next time.